Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a special guest, uh, Trev. He's one of the members at MIC, um, and I'm glad to have him on. I've talked to him a bit throughout the, uh, the time he's been here. So thank you for coming on, my man. Yeah, of course, bro. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So we're kind of going to start it off like the usual way. Um, how did you get into trading and then how did you kind of find MIC from there? Sure. So um, my trading journey has been kind of crazy. I started when I was way younger. Uh, my parents got into Forex trading a long time ago. Oh, shit. And <laughs> yeah, so we met. It was kind of funny. But we met this guy that was supposed to be this like God tier trader. And um, he was always flashing like sick watches. He lived close to us. So we went to his house a couple of times. He had like a fleet of cars, like Jacobs and company watches, and, like all this crazy stuff. Yeah. So he kind of like, I mean, I was like 18, 16, somewhere in there at the time. Mm-hmm. So I was obviously hooked. And I tried Forex for a long time and tried to follow him, but his style was like never cut a loser ever. And basically, there was there's, before the FIFO rule or whatever, you can just mm-hmm. infinitely scale. And it never, Jeez. like, you would basically, every single time you add it to a position, it would treat it as a different trade. So you could cut a losing position, but also take a winner on the same trade. It was really weird. So That's long true. story short, I thought he was legit, and he ended up killing himself. And we Whoa. figured out the FBI was no like way. stalking him. Yeah, that's crazy. It was crazy. So holy shit. Yeah. So like it really shook me, but like I had the trading bug. I was like, I want this. Yeah. I got to figure this out. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the idea of trading from home, and I loved the markets too. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just loved the markets. So I tried forex for like another year and just never found success. Just kept spinning my you know wheels and. Uh, yeah. Then I saw Bao on Twitter and Alex and started following, like, basically all the guys on Twitter. Yeah. And um, I was just like, dude, why am I trading Forex when I don't know one single guy that's making money doing it? Like, the only people that are doing it is, like, some random guy on YouTube with a Lamborghini. And I just, I don't know, I wasn't stupid enough to fall for that kind of, I don't know. Yeah. So um, I basically, when Bao started MIC, I was like one of the, I don't know, one of the first members, I think, and yep. um, and joined up and have kind of had an up and down road in there. Tried large caps for a while, just trying to find my place. Yeah, yep. but um, tried longing, tried uh, large caps. Then I got over PDT when I, I sold my house, and luckily was able to go to Cobra. And um, awesome. I've been focused on shorts for like about a year. I like that, man. I like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. So kind of I mean, it sounds like you you had kind of the journey a lot of people have where it's just like it's it's rough kind of finding your niche, but like, you know, it's tough. I mean, we've talked about this, right? It's like yeah. it's like you almost have to try everything a little bit. And like people ask me all the time, yeah. like, how do you know what you what you're gonna do? Like Harry, how'd you know you're gonna long? How'd you know you this? Because Harry was started out shorting and he was yeah. really good at it, you know. But it's like you try everything, right? And it's like you kind of know like in your stomach what what works and what feels good like harry how did you even find out that longing was i we've talked a little bit but what gave you that inkling um yeah so for me i mean um i initially i like i've talked about this before like i started trading like otc stocks like really really penny stocks like sub penny stocks and i grew a little account like through that and then i got into uh shorting and just because I saw everyone on Twitter was shorting. So it's like, of course, if everyone's making money shorting on Twitter, like I, I think yeah. that most people usually start longing, but I kind of had that Twitter introduction where yep. I saw that people were just killing it, shorting. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start shorting then like, fuck this long shit. And so hmm. I guess I was kind of in a market cycle where um, when I was newer, it was a lot easier. Like there were no hundred like million vol, there were no so hundred million volume days. There were no uh, crazy ass like squeezes. There were, but like as long as you didn't trade a low float, like you were pretty pretty much golden. Like just due to the amount of volume that was traded, like you'd get a ton of faders on these stocks 
that are even like 20, 30 mil floats just due to the fact that there's not that much volume in the market. So I used to do the all day faders like all the time. Like uh, Brian Lee, he spoke at Traders for a Cause. Like I was in a Discord group with like him and Bear. And like we were all just Bear. absolutely killing it on the faders. But then as the volume started to come in, like I really kind of uh, like noticed the opportunity for longs. And I wasn't necessarily getting squeezed on my shorts because like I'd always stick to like either low hang fruit or just the kind of broken stocks. And I'd usually start in either pre-market or after the open and then they would just kind of fade. And uh, like, as far as like the losses go, like I would cut after like 10, 20 cents every time. And my risk reward was always so good, but I noticed that there was an opportunity for going long, but it was just, I found that um, like, it, it, I knew it was going to take some work because um, I, I knew that I was going to have to probably like reinvent the wheel a little bit because like there's not that many profitable people longing right now. Like there's like maybe like Roland Wolf and a couple other guys, but I mean, there's not a ton of people who are killing it on the long side. So I started with first bounce that Bao taught me. Um, and then I kind of expanded my playbook from there. And I was also shorting as well, just, just to kind of keep that money like kind of coming in until I could get like consistent as long. And then as I started getting more and more consistent, and once you nail like a big home run long, you're like, fuck, I love this. Like, this is it. <laughs> like you know, like um, the last one that I got was like BFRI and I bought it like $4 and sold it like six fifty. Like it was absolute. And you're just like, that's and that's in like fucking. This is why I do this. And you're like, I'm, I'm yeah. done for the fucking day. Like you load the boat on something like that. You're like, I'm done for the day. But that's I mean, addicting. Like, it is addicting. Dude. It, it, it's been a, like, it is addicting. And like, I love it. Like, I, I, you know, like, I love longing. And, um, you know, there, it, it, like, it's been a bit slower for me, I'd say, like, the past, like, week, week and a half. But, like, um, you know, when it's slow for me, I know it's slow for everyone. Because, like, if stocks aren't going up and stocks aren't moving well, then, like, as a short seller, like, it is going to be a bit slower for you as well. Because, you know, so when things are slow yeah. for me, it's really slow for everyone, you know. For everyone. Um, it's tough. It's so, tough. But, yeah. you, know, you know, like, it's like, Trev, it took you like a few years to kind of find your like comfort, right? Like it took you like yeah. to find exactly what you wanted. Because I remember we talked about you wanted to, you did try low, uh, low float, like small caps, day twos, like all that. What do you think it was that kept you from finding like what it was that you wanted to focus on? Like, were you venturing too far outside of something once you found comfort in it? Were you trying to do too much size? Like, was there something that was preventing you from finding your niche? Um, to be honest, just being an idiot and not <laughs> so kind of where I found yeah. my seriously, like I was just trying too much stuff. Like I would have yeah. a couple good days and I'm like, this is it. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I'd have, like Harry said, I would have a good long and I'm like, I'm a long, but then the market would kind of shift a little bit. And then I'm like, then I have no trades. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Now I'm a short. And I just switched a lot. And um, it kind of came to the point where I was just pissed off. And I was like, dude, I got to figure this out. Um, so I was just like, yeah. why am I not just 100% following Val, Alex, James, all those guys and all the mods and chat, Tom, you know what I mean? And I just kind of sat myself down and said, no, you're going to focus 100% on what they're doing. And so I kind of just started with low hangers because everyone's always said yep. low hangers are the easiest. And Best way so to learn, basically, in my opinion. Right, yeah, right now I just trade, I only trade low hangers or like super broken day ones. Yeah, I, I like that. And yeah. I avoid everything else. I think that's kind of a good uh, situation because like there's a ton of people in MIC that I just don't like understand why they're not, why they're not following like the mods, Alex, like I just don't get it because like you have Alex who's like literally posting his plan every morning, who's making like millions a year yeah it's crazy and and people are still like oh what about this stock like someone wrote the other day like and like no offense to them they're like looking for first red day on pfizer it's like bro like <laughs> is like a legit company and they're also giving millions of people vaccines right now like you don't want to be shorting <laughs> that at the height of the fucking pandemic you know like it's just things like yeah. that where it's like no, bro, go to the watch list, see what Alex has laid out, see what Bao has laid out, or me, like, even for me, longing as well, like, if there's a good first bounce, I'll write in chat, like, oh, good first bounce here. If there's a good play here, you know, I'll write, oh, good player, potential play here, you know, like, no one is, like, holding anything back, but 
I, I would still see like long traders who don't watch the videos who would like long broken stocks and they would do it every single day. And I'd be like, bro, you're longing a broken stock. Like, you know, like this is what you need to be fucking shorting. <laughs> and then they yeah. see the hot chick that's going up, 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 up. And they're like, oh, it's too high. It's too high. It's too high. It's like, no, bro, buy high and sell fucking higher. Do not be trying <laughs> to get these discount stocks on clearance as a long, you know? So I buy think it's really dip. about you just watch the videos and do what people fucking say in the videos, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, like, I think for me, like when I started following Alex's watch list, at first, I was honestly intimidated by it because I'd see, because obviously, like, he's a god-tier trader. He's amazing. You know, you look at his P&Ls and you're like, holy smoke. I, you know, obviously, everyone wants to be there. But I would look at his, the watch list, and I would see, like, I'm scaling 5, 6, 7 or something, or 15, 16, yep. 17, or and I'm like, damn, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Because I just <laughs> didn't understand the concept of scaling small on the front side and then yep. getting bigger on the back side. It, it just, it took me a while um to kind of get that concept and now like i pretty much i try to make my own watch list before his you know what i mean but uh, I like I, his his watch list trumps mine basically <laughs> so yeah. i make my plan and then whatever his is i'm like okay well if he's avoiding that stock what am i doing well that's what you're supposed it? to do you're supposed to like make like be your own fisherman right like um i actually just cut uh someone the other day he's a friend of mine who works at a hedge fund and they basically make a watch this every morning. They have a meeting every morning. They talk about their plan. And all the senior traders make their plans. And all the junior traders kind of like make their ideas. And of course, you're going to use the senior traders like to better yourself. Like yeah. that's how you learn. Like I think people get yeah. like intimidated by like thinking that they're taking someone's idea. Like, like if Alex or like Harry or someone posts a watch or Tom, it's like people for some reason feel like, oh, but I didn't come up with the idea. So it's not a good one. Like that's not true. Like eventually you will come up with those ideas yourself. But like, how would you know to do that if you didn't learn from someone better than you? You know, so it's like, yeah. I, I feel like you're impeding your own progress by not listening to the guys who are more senior than you. Like I, I do it all For the time. Sure. Like if I see fucking Harry or Alex or anyone who's been trading longer than me talk about something, I go, okay. Like, I think I'm a smart guy, but like I should listen to them and see what they're yeah. seeing. Yeah. And most of the time in trading, it's like, they're right. Like guys who've seen this before, it's just like the same thing when Alex says, I'm avoiding this stock. Sometimes I'm like, why is he avoiding this stock? And you look into it. It's a low flow. It's SSR. It's easy. But there's a million little red flags. And it's like, then it squeezes the, the high heavens. And you're like, okay, hmm. like now I'm learning. So now the next time that comes up, I'm going to have the same reaction. So then you're going to kind of pass the torch down and teach the rest. But yeah. I guess, I guess for you, like where you're at now, what is, what is something that's kind of, uh, hindering your trading journey like i know we just got, we had a really long call the other day but like what is something for you that is like you're trying to work on you're trying to get better at um and what are you doing to improve on it um so i my biggest so i've in the last like four three to four months i've been super consistent so i'm winning i'm winning like i'm a consistent trader over the last Good. you know since i basically started only our low hanging fruit in broken yep. stocks, and obviously there's little, you know, growth period in there. But um, so right now I'm trying to trying to size up slowly, and with that I'm kind of realizing, you know, it's, it's easier to be profitable with small size, and then as yep. you grow, like learning to get more size. And when I say more size, for me, it's you know I'm trying to get like a thousand shares on it, be pretty happy. Yep. Um, yep. So. But, like, I'm kind of realizing, okay, I need to go a little bit smaller on the front side. Like, I've always felt like you have that first bullet's got to be, like, the bullet. You know, that's the line. Yeah. And, and, like, yeah. I got to put as much size, like, not as much size, but I got to put a lot of my size on that. And then I get squeezed. And I'm, from watching uh, everyone else, we kind of realizing that, like, I need to start smaller on the front. I mean, every, yeah. obviously, everyone says it, but... um smaller a little bit smaller bullets and then wait for the top to set and then kind of try to load in some size when you have a small stop and then my risk reward yep. lately has been huge because i track everything on trader view and i was oh. noticing like my winning days were 50 to 100 bucks but when i lose i'd lose like 200 bucks and so it was you know i'd have a couple good days and then shit on a couple good days shit on and i was like dude i gotta cut those out so kind of realized the sizing thing was my big issue and then how i kind of decided to work on it was what we talked about the other day I've, I've been religiously recording my screens and then i'm just taking everyone's charts that posts them um yeah. except bow bow just because he's so 
it's hard. He's robotic. He's it's different. Yeah, I, I know I can't be on Val's level right now. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I watch Alex um, charts, your charts, and basically I'll put them up on my screen and then I'll just watch the tape, kind of watch the price action around it and just try to figure out um, what's happening. I've been DMing Alex and kind of asking him, hey, how much size did you put on this? And like, how much did you cover here of your position? Just to try to get, yeah. understand yeah. kind of what he's thinking and his thought process for for putting a little bit more size on. Yeah, I just, size is so say, tough. I just wanted to say kind of uh, one thing is that um, actually two things. Number one, I just like, I wanted to kind of talk about the watch list like real quick again. And like, yeah. I feel like when you're in an environment like MIC, like it's also like kind of competitive a little bit, you know, like you see someone get that fill, like you want that fill, you know, like you see someone get this, you want that. And then when you look at the For watch sure. list, you kind of boil it boils down and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to be copying his plan. I want to be doing this myself. I want to be doing this myself because it is kind of, a, you know, I, it, it, it is kind of a competitive environment when you're trading, you know, like it's like playing sports or playing whatever. And like, you know, I guess when you have a ton of shorts, you know, together, you are technically all on the same team, but like you know, when you're playing on a team, you always want to get the most goals or the most points or the most this, right? I mean, it's just fucking human nature. I mean, for some yeah. people, it's not. But I mean, at least for me, like, when I see a fucking long go up and someone else catches it, like, you know, I'm happy for them. But I'm like, fuck, I wish I got that. Fuck, You know, you know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. When you're in that type of environment, um, I, I think for me, like, as far as the loss list goes, like, you should be thinking of it like that you're in a team environment, right? As opposed to I've got 2,300 other people that are, you know, you know, I don't, you know, I don't really know them. I don't really know what's going on. But like, I think like if you focus on that as like a team environment where like everyone is trying to get better and like everyone's trying to help themselves, it makes it a little bit easier to follow the watch list and be like, okay, Alex is here to help me, you know? And, and so when you have that kind of mindset, it's a lot easier to be following the watch list is it's like, okay, thank you, Alex, for the help. You know, now I'm kind of helping myself. I'm not following you. Like, thank you for the help. You know, and when you look at it as like that mindset and like a team environment, like sometimes it can help, like as far as like looking at the loss list goes. And also like, um, I think as far as like the, the whole like sizing and like getting better and stuff like that, I think it's good that you, that you recognize that because, um, you know, when you're kind of like loading more, more size, like on the backside, like that helps you so fucking much because it reduces your risk so much on the front side as a short. And I mean, you don't really know how far it can go. Right. I mean, you start mm -hmm. in at six and you start in with that big first bullet. Cause you're, you know, I, I feel like when you're a newer trader, you're kind of like programmed, like one entry, one exit, but you know, you now that you're over PDT and whatever, like you can fucking inf infinitely scale for the most part. So <laughs> it's like, you know, now first bullets at six, well, add, add a bit more at seven, add a bit more at eight, you know, when you're using the same bullet like three times and, you know, you end up with a shit average and then the stock's going down and then you're like barely getting paid on it. But when you're kind of adding a little bit, you know, at, at six, a little bit at seven, a little bit at eight, and then you get this massive death candle and then you add it all in on the pop, well, then you get a fucking great average and that's a great way to approach it. And just, mm -hmm. I wanted to just mention one more thing like as far as like newer traders listening to this is that, and I talked about this yesterday, is that like, if you're not like, if you're, if you're a newer trader and you know, you, let's say you're trading a broken stock and you're not adding into strength, I really don't believe you're putting yourself in a good place to grow. You know, if you're always waiting for that, like confirmation candle, or you're always waiting for that, whatever, and you're not like adding a little bit into strength, I don't think you're putting yourself in a really good position to grow. I'm not saying add a lot of shares, but like, just like you talked about where you're like slowly kind of scaling in and then you're adding a lot on the backside, like you get that, uh, you know, learning and teaching moment from when you have skin in the game that you can't really practice on the weekends, you know, like as far as you, like when, you know, when you have like, let's say like hundred or 200 shares in a stock, like you're watching the stock hard. You know, like even yeah. though you don't have that much money in the game, you're still getting that opportunity where you're like watching the tape like super, super closely. And like you're you're like putting your mind 
um, you know, in that situation where you do have money online and you are in that kind of like fight or flight situation where you're, you're watching it closely, you're watching it closely, because like, even if it's $1 in the stock, like I'm going to be fucking watching that shit hard, you know? Um, and so I think that puts yourself in a really good position as far as your growth, because you're getting that experience. You're watching how things are reacting at levels. You're watching that kind of order flow. You're watching the, the tape and you're, you're seeing how other people react in the chat and you're, 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 you know, you're seeing everything, the money flow, the everything as it takes place. And you're really, really hyper-focused. Whereas you watch the tape back on like the weekend, you're kind of scrolling through and you're like, eh, fuck it. You know, okay. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Right. Oh, and there's so, the stuff. I'm going to back up. Yeah. 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 It's like fast forward. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to manipulate this fucking tape how I want to see it. And then you walk away feeling <laughs> like a winner, but you don't really have the kind of skin in the yeah. game and that kind of real time experience. So I think, you know, that is a perfect position to put yourself in a really, really good kind of growth spot because of, you know, just having that little bit of skin in the game. And then you're loading the boat on the backside. So you're taking advantage of that strength and you're taking advantage of that confirmation, which really trains your mind to, uh, you know, trade like a reflex or whatever, right? Yeah. I was watching a video of Alex and an old IG Live. Thanks, James, for the recommendation. Um, I was, I've been going through those and he said something that was like really caught my attention. He said that he puts all his small fishing orders out and basically he just kind of letting the stocks tell him which one to focus on. Yeah. Like when his little fishing orders hit, he's like, okay, now it's time to pay attention to the stock. Like, is this going to be a stock I add more to, or is I'm just going to let it run a little bit. And I was, yeah. I kind of liked that approach because yeah. if you're staring at it super hard before you end up FOMOing in yeah. way yeah. too early and I've done that plenty. Dude, you know how many times I've like, like my level, like I'm looking at a chart right now, like my levels are like, let's say 330, 350, but like it bounces to 325 and you're like, we're at 315 or something. And you're like, oh, well, let me get in a little bit. Whereas like, yep. you know, if you just kind of like can pump the brakes and like actually wait for your spots. And like, I feel like sometimes I like to put my mind in like the long bias trader. Cause I feel like as a long, it's way more like as a short, you can kind of scale in a, bit, a little bit. I feel like long is like the best entry like is the most patient entry, like Harry says. And like, yeah. that's where you're going to get the best risk reward. So it's the same idea on the short side is the more patient you are, the better outcome you're going to have, the bigger PL you're going to have, the more size you're going to be able to get on, you're going to be able to do a lot more. And I think a, a key lesson I've learned over time, and I, I know we talked about this, Trev, but like, you know, there are trades, I mean, before you enter a trade, when I'm looking at a chart, I'm thinking to myself, like, is this a chart that if it gets to my best line, is it a nail and veil trade? Am I trying to like, you know, am I hitting that one line, maybe sizing into that line or even not, maybe just getting my 30%, whatever. And then whatever happens, it tanks, I'm covering out because the range isn't there. If it's a stock with a ton of range and you're able to, you know, you can scale in a little bit, yeah. you can let it reject, then you can add size and like, you still have plenty of space to like add size responsibly without like just being so tight and so like nervous yeah so i think a lot of people just try to size on everything like like there's a chart a couple of charts today these stocks are only up like 20 percent, 30 percent. those aren't stocks that you're gonna be able to in my opinion add size to you're gonna go for the nail and bail it hits your best line austin talks about being a line trader your confirmation is the stock hitting your line you know i'm gonna try to size into my best line if it gets there with my hard stop and that's it you know if a stock's up 100 percent then you can think to yourself, all right, when this finally rejects, now I can think about the big picture move. And yeah. when I say big picture, I'm not saying hold it all day long for a home run, you know, line to line, but bigger picture idea. And then you can add size. And I think that's why, like, again, like kind of like you said, everybody struggles with that idea. It's like, I don't know why people try to rush it. I mean, I do is they want to make more money, but it's just, you can't rush that. And you kind of have to identify the setups where you can do that. Yeah. And I also want to just point something out is that you know, I don't know if you can do this on DAS or not. I forget. But if you can set like price alerts or something like that, that can yeah, help so. you, you know, a lot as far as like not being at your, not being at your desk. Like when the market opens, like I know a lot of people, they have a lot of patience issues, like not uh, waiting for their line. And some people like you just can't change. Like I know that like, like some people have changed, but some people are just well, like that. Yeah. Bao, Bao has FOMO, right? He scales in. Like that's yeah. why he does it too. Yeah. And so some people, you know, you're not going to change. So if, if, if you're one of those people, like I would kind of encourage you like set a price alert and leave the fucking room at nine 30 when the market opens. And if you get that <laughs> alert, you fucking run back in. But if you don't get that yeah. alert, no fucking trade. 
and just <laughs> being no bet. I mean, I'm serious because I know I know some guys who I agree with you. Uh, let's, say, the door. let's say let's say you know it's the hot chick, and all of a sudden we get a stuff move, and so you know they're like, well, what am I gonna trade, right? And then they go and they see a little broken stock popping. And that's where the fucking problems start for them. And they'll, you know, I guess they'll long the broken stock, you know, get fucked there. Then they'll maybe go to, I mean, th- I've seen this happen before, like, and they'll go to a low hanging fruit and they'll see that pop a little bit and they'll think, oh, the low hanging fruit, that's good long. You know, things popping. Also not a good idea. Um, and then they'll go to another shitty broken stock and long that again and think, and, and they'll leave their desk and go, wow, I really fucked up. And then they'll message me and say, Harry, look at what I did today. And I'll say, bro, when was a low hanging fruit long ever in the video <laughs> since MIC started, right? <laughs> but it's that problem of, it's not that they don't know what they're doing wrong. It is that, um, you know, they're just not training themselves to be put in good habits, right? And so if it's a year and you still are having a hard time training yourself, you got to change it up. So that's where the price alerts can help out a lot because on thinkorswim, like you can get an alert on your phone that says, Hey, this is at this level now. And you can run back in your office and trade that shit. But if you, you know, if someone's listening to this, like not necessarily Trev, but like, you know, if you, if, if you've got a problem and, and that's the, that's the problem, then you can fix that with price alerts, get those alerts on your phone. And then you can put yourself almost back in your, your office and you're less stressed again. You know, like, it's like, you take yourself out of the driver's seat and then you put yourself back in and you've got a different mindset and you're like, wow, okay. Like this is at my level. This is what I planned for before the open. This is what I'm kind of, you know, doing and I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. And that can really put yourself in a good situation. Whereas if you're just sitting at your computer or your monitor to trade, you know, that's where um, I think you can get into trouble on definitely slow days, definitely on slow days. I agree. I actually, I really like that advice because I think especially as a short bias guy, it's like, you know, that we have such FOMO for some reason, like a stock pops and it's like, get to eat anywhere close to your line. Like you just get FOMO. It's instant, right? Like what, I think what makes Alex so good is that he's patient for his lines. Like that's why he can use the size he does because he's getting the best possible entry. And it's like, I think we all, and I know like I've had this issue, Trev, you had this issue. It's just you just size too early or you don't know where to add size. And it's like, you know, again, we, we recognize that the best place to size is at the best line. So now it just comes to like the inner battle between ourselves. Like, can we be more patient? And like, like Harry said, like use tools to make you more patient for those yeah. levels. Yeah. If that means you trade less, like, would you rather like nail and bail, like trade small size and every ticker be a little early, like have small yeah. days, or would you rather get to your best line, use your best size, and then yeah. you make enough money that you don't have to fucking trade for a year. Yeah. And I think that also when following your plan becomes, uh, you know, it, it becomes more than like it, it, like when you're in a money. situation and following your plan, like is like the number one thing you're focusing on every day. That's where, um, you know, you can really kind of, that's where the magic happens. Like when following your plan is more than the money, that's when you can make a lot. I like that. I like that a lot. And so Trev, I mean, before we wrap it up, you know, do you have, cause you've been with MIC since the beginning. Do you have any sort of advice for newer guys coming in or guys who are still maybe struggling uh, to find their, their footing? Uh, yeah, dude. Um, basically the things, well, you were saying actually kind of ties into what you're just saying. Uh, one of the things that helped me, cause I have been that idiot that jumps in early and just sits down and I feel like I have to be in a trade. Um, yeah. We the thing for me that's helped, well, one is watching all the videos. And then two is um, I screenshot. I mean, I have every trade I've ever, almost ever taken. I screenshot it. And when I'm feeling after a horrible week and I'm like, man, I got destroyed this week. I would go sit down and look at my, my, all my screenshots. So I kept them not just in like a journal, but I keep them all winners, all losers. And then I keep them uh, by play like what type of play it was. I keep them pretty well organized. And I'll look back at my trades and it's like, you look and you say, damn, I basically, it's not that I'm a bad trader. I just did. Well, I'm a bad trader, I guess the right way to say it. (laughs) I didn't do what I was supposed to do. It's not that the system's broken. 
because that's where I used to switch around a lot. It's like, oh man, longing sucks. But it's like, no, I was just doing a bad job of it. And yeah. I would notice kind of my patterns like, well, I'm slamming lows. It's 20 cents off the line and I missed it. So now I'm slamming yep. it and it pops up. Yep. I get stopped out. Duh, Trevor. Like <laughs> that's <laughs> not trading, bro. And honestly, dude, that's given me a lot of comfort in like those really shitty times where you're just your account's bleeding and you're like, man, am I ever going to get this? I would look at my trades and say, am I really doing everything they're teaching or am I just doing my own thing? Be yeah. an idiot. And I'd look and I'd be like, well, I can't quit if I'm not doing exactly what they're saying. You know what I mean? It's just like, Dude, I 99.99% of the time, it is never the market's fault. It is never no, the market's dude. fault that you're losing or that you're having a bad day. It is always yours. You'll get that one. I'll, I'll give you the 0.1% if you get a black swan or like an offering when you're long. You did what you're supposed to and shit just goes crazy. I'll give you that. But like everyone, like you're saying, right? How can you quit this game if you're not doing what people are teaching you? If you're going to ignore that and lose, then this isn't for you. You know, it's like yeah, stick, to the, stick to it. <laughs> yeah, you should. Exactly. I agree. You should. If you can't stick to what the better people are telling you, like it's like Harry telling people, like, stop longing day two. Stop doing this. Stop longing low broken VWAP, yeah. everything, all that shit. And people are like, I'll fucking do it again. I love that meme. It's like, I'll do yeah. the same thing until yeah. I, you, <laughs> so you stop. It's like, dude, what you the shut fuck? up and take like, my money meme. Yeah. yeah also, it's like, go ahead, dude. And also I think on, you know, situations like that, like, yes like if you're long something and all of a sudden it gets halted like for an offering like you know what are you gonna do it's what are you what are you gonna do in that situation <laughs> right like i mean that's never happened to me i have gotten a stock that halted um i remember like it it, it was my fault like my biggest loss was my fault it was like a year and <laughs> whatever and like i left some open orders out the stock tanked and got halted and I guess there was a conference call going on and I didn't realize. And I guess the whole fucking team just day. quit on the call. Like everyone said, fuck it, I'm out. Like they're, I'm done with the <laughs> so, The worst long so, call. Oh, so, so I'm stuck. I have like open fantasy orders open. I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Takes like fucking four and a half, five hours to open up. And then, um, you know, after that, that was a good one. it just tanked and it went to a dollar from like, I believe like five or something <laughs> like that, like absolute madness. And, but even then, like, that's a situation where I was sloppy, overconfident, um, you know, not paying attention to what's even going on with the ticker, right? Th those are all my fault. Um, and so, you know, I think that like, when you, when you take a good hard look at it, like all your losses are your fault, but it's like how you control them. And I think for FOMO as well, um, like have rules around your FOMO. You know, have rules around your uh, your shitty risk management or have rules around, you know, where you have been sucking in your trading. You know, if you if you just, you know, go on trade review and you're like, OK, not 90 percent of my losses are pre-market. Well, then stop fucking trading pre-market. 90 percent <laughs> of your losses are in the first 15 minutes of the day. Well, obviously, you suck in the first 15 minutes of the day. So don't trade that. You know, there's such simple rules. Okay, like, let's take a look at my charts on the weekend and where are my losses coming from, you know? What mindset was I in on? So true. And yeah. what, what, like, where did the FOMO come from? Okay, well, obviously I'm losing on these types of situations, so I'm just going to cut that out. You know, like, for me as a long trader, I noticed that those stocks that kind of spike and, like, give their initial range and then, like, kind of drop down and break high day again, like I'm going to lose on that 90% of the time, you know, like a situation that Tom just posted on BLPH. I mean, someone can look it up if they want, right. That type of chart where we kind of pop up and go back down. Let's say that thing breaks 375 again, like 90, like 99% that's fucking stuffing. Like, you know, and so once you kind of recognize that you can either go long before and sell into the stuff or you just don't trade it at all. And, um, you know, yeah, like chart. that, that right there. Yeah. Trev's showing it. You know, if you're listening yep. to the audio on Spotify, well, then you're going <laughs> to Tom's fucking chart, dude. Oh, um, I just, I was just seeing him trade. Like the stock hasn't even done anything yet. It just, he's already trading it. He is FOMO the biggest Titan. FOMO piece yeah. of shit. I hope he hears this at the end of it. <laughs> I can't even stand it sometimes. It's insane. I'll be like, I'll go to take a piss and he comes back and he's like short everything. I'm like, 
Oh my God, I need a better tab. But <laughs> we do have to get ready for the open. I didn't even realize what time it yeah. is. Um, so Trev, thank you for coming on, man. I love this. Of song. course, guys. I like talking to you. I think yeah. you've been awesome in the community and, and I look forward to seeing your Appreciate progress. Appreciate it. Yeah, bro. Hey, thank you, man. Um, it's always uh, good to talk to you guys. Hell yeah, dude. Anytime.